So last section, we started talking about the ways that we could think about the relationship between two quantitative variables, and we focused on correlation as that measure. Uh, but there is another way um, that is called linear regression, and we're going to talk about it a little bit in this class, but um, this is a major topic in statistics. Uh, in fact, I teach an entire semester-long class that is essentially about linear regression, so there's a lot here. Um, and for this section, I'm going to use an example from the town that I used to live in in Massachusetts. It's a data set about the number of bike riders that are on a rail trail, sort of like a greenway. Um, it's a bike path that uh, doesn't have a lot of intersections with roads. Um, and we're going to try and predict the number of people who are on the rail trail based on the temperature that it is outside. So I could look at uh, a scatter plot to think about the relationship between these two variables. And when we are talking about a scatter plot, we typically put the response variable on the y-axis. So the thing that we are the most interested in, that we want to see if we can explain, in this case the volume, the number of people on the rail trail, um, and then we put our explanatory variable on the x-axis. So in this case, I think that the average temperature might explain something about the volume of bike riders on the bike path. We've thought about strength and direction of association. If I had to uh, characterize this, I would say that this was a positive association. It looks to me that as the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. Uh, it's not a super strong association. It's maybe moderate uh, weak. I think that there is an association there. It's not just like randomness. Um, but we're gonna uh, try and look further into that. So uh, in linear regression, our idea is to find a line that best describes the scatter plot. So this is in case we were talking on the phone and I needed to describe to you the relationship between the average temperature and the number of people on the rail trail, it would be really tedious for me to say there is a point, it's uh, about you know 650 people at 60 degrees. There's another point uh, which is you know less than 200 people around 60 degrees and try and explain the whole thing. But if I could say the intercept is blah and the slope is you know this other number um, and you remembered something Thing about the equation of a line, then you could draw yourself this picture and know what the relationship looked like. So it's a way uh, to summarize the relationship between two quantitative variables. So we're going to try and find the line of best fit uh, that best describes the scatter plot. So I used software to find this one. Um, I could imagine, you know, like if I had to just find it by eye, I might try and, you know, find something a little bit different. But, you know, this looks pretty good to me. So as with everything in this class, uh, we have a population parameter version of our statistics and we have a sample statistic version. Uh, we're going to focus on the sample statistic version, the one that we calculate from our actual data. And uh, the way that we would write out that regression line would be uh, y hat. So this is y hat. I put the little hat over it to mean that it is estimated or predicted. Um, and then a is my intercept and b is my slope, and x is my explanatory variable. So let's look at the regression equation for my problem. So I found that uh, volume hat, the predicted number of people on the rail trail, is equal to 99.6 plus 4.8 times my explanatory variable, which was average temperature. Um, and then I have a couple questions here. So if it's 60 degrees out, how many riders do you predict? And then what if it's 72 degrees outside? So let's do the one for 60 degrees out. Um, I'm going to do 99.6 plus 4.8. And then I'm going to plug in an average temperature of 60 degrees. So I've got 99.6 plus 288. And that's 387.6. So I'm going to round that to 388 because we can't have partial people. Um, if it's 60 degrees outside, we would predict 388 people on the rail trail.
and I'm gonna let you try out for 72 degrees outside to see what the predicted uh, number of riders would be at that temperature. So if we wanted to visualize that prediction, we would think about our x value. So here I am at 60 degrees. I would go straight up and I would say, okay, my prediction is gonna be right on the line. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could read over uh, on my plot and that would be my predicted value. That's the 388. So you can actually just sort of estimate predictions if you have the picture of the line. It's not as accurate as using the equation of the line, but it's another way to uh, come up with predictions. So uh, for this one, what I'd like you to do is, without using the equation, figure out which of these answers is closest to the number of riders when it's 80 degrees out. Um, and we'll talk about that in synchronous class. So we've made a prediction um, for a 60 degree day, and I had a volume hat for 60 degrees. We said that it was 388. That was our predicted number of riders. But one of the cases in my data set is a day where it was 60 degrees and we actually saw 540 riders. And then the question is, how far is that observed ridership from the predicted ridership? Um, it's, it's a little bit different, right? Uh, 388 is less than 400, 540, that's, you know, that's quite a bit higher. So it doesn't feel like we did the very best job of making the prediction for that particular point. So uh, we have a couple more terms. We'll say that the observed response is the actual value in the data, and we'll just use regular y to write that. And then the predicted value is the value that the model would predict if you plugged in x. Um, so that's the point right on the line, and we denote that as y hat. Um, and then that line of best fit that we've talked about, that uh, my technology found for me, is the one that makes the predicted values as close as possible to the observed values. But what does that really mean? So let's see, I've got my predicted value uh, for a 60 degree day, which is right here on the line. And then I don't think this is actually the day with 540 people. I think that would be the one up here. So maybe I will make that one red as well. Um, and so if I wanted to think about the difference between my, uh, my observed value, which is this, uh, this one that I'm making larger up here, um, and my predicted value, which is this one down here, it would just be this vertical distance here. So the distance between the real value and the uh, predicted value. And we call that line a residual. So the residual for a data point is the observed value minus the predicted value, and that's y minus y hat, and it's that vertical distance. So we could think about, uh, this is a residual for um, a day when there were uh, maybe, mm, I don't know, 450 people who were out. Uh, we could also think about the residual for that day with 540 people out. I could think about uh, this day over here when it was maybe uh, 72 degrees, and then my predicted value would be up here on the line. I could think about uh, this day when it was a little bit less than 40 degrees, and we would predict here up on the line. So we can have a residual for every single point on the plot. And it turns out that the way that technology finds the line of best fit is that it minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. So uh, here's the equation for that. Um, you would take your observed real y minus your predicted y, you'd subtract them, you'd square them, you'd add them up, and you wanna minimize that number. Um, and we rely on technology to do that. So you don't need to know about this equation. Um, but you should remember that the least squares line is the same as the regression line. And I just want to show you a little bit what it means when it says uh, the squared uh, residuals. So we're gonna try and visualize some of these squared residuals. So here's one residual. And then if I squared it, I would get an area that was like this, right? Well, pretend that's a square. Um, and then I could find this residual here and I could square that. Um, and I would add that up, I would square this residual, I could square this residual, I could square this residual. Oh, now my boxes are starting to overlap. 
Um, I could square this residual. I could square this residual. So you can kind of imagine um, that if I did this for every single one, I would have a lot of squares all over my plot. Um, and I would sum up the squared residuals. Um, but if I picked a slightly different line, so one that was steeper or one that was less steep, all of those squares would change size. Um, and so the idea is that we're trying to minimize the sum of those squares. And this is the line that technology has told us minimizes that number.